Welcome to the Sober Q podcast. Hi, my name is Simon. I'm an alcoholic. The question is, what are some personal examples of having no defense against the first drink? Um, okay, so just a very quick um, recap of, of my background. I've, my degree is in pharmacology. I have a lot of self-knowledge around um, how drugs including alcohol work, and um, when it comes to self-knowledge and science and things like that, that's not one of my weak points. Um, in a nutshell, ignorance is not the excuse when it comes to my inability to, to manage my alcohol. Um, there was a few things that I would use to try and control my drinking and to stay stopped. Um, fear, self-knowledge, and prescription medications. So the first example that I, I want to discuss, so all of these happened around the same time frame, which was a couple of years before I got sober. And I'd reached a, a point where uh, I could not stay sober. Um, and I was beginning to reach out for help. So I went to a doctor and I said, look, I'm having some problems with drinking. I had not admitted that I was an alcoholic. But what I said to him was, I, I, I really need some help. I just need... I'm scared of drinking, but I need some time between me and the next drink. Because if I could just get a week or a couple weeks up, I'm pretty sure that I could stay stopped. And he gave me this prescription medication, which um, stops the pleasurable effects of the drinking. And I knew what the medication was, and I thought this was an incredible idea. Started taking the medication, no significant side effects. Um, the drinking was under control for the first week. Even the second week, it was fine. And... Then something came into my head and it said, you should stop taking these tablets. It didn't say stop taking the tablets so you could drink. But what it said was, you're pretty good now. You've been sober a couple of weeks. Why don't you stop taking these tablets? And I stopped taking the tablets. And within two days, I was drinking again. And there was nothing that entered my head that told me, from an outside perspective, that that thinking was leading me back to a drink. All my thinking told me was, you should stop taking those tablets that stop making you enjoy drinking. And then I was drinking. The next situation, which was around this time frame, maybe six months down the track, was I had gone into a detox. My girlfriend had organized that. I was wholly surprised that they would let somebody like me into a detox because I didn't consider myself to have the problem that alcoholics had. Um, I was down on my luck, so to speak. Um, and I was in that, that detox seven, maybe 10 days. And I came out of there elated. I came out elated because, you know, I had 10 days where I hadn't been drinking and my mental health seemed to have improved. They put me in touch with the fellowship for the first time. So I had knowledge around the fact that AA was an option and I'd stopped drinking and I got discharged and I went to a meeting and I went to a meeting the next day. And then I had this thought that came into my head and it said, why don't you just have a couple drinks and keep doing meetings? Why don't you use meetings to manage your drinking? And then there won't be an issue. And there was this vague sense in my head. I'm pretty sure AA is to stop drinking, not to just have a couple and I picked up a drink anyway, and I did not get back to AA from that point for the next two and a half years. So those are my two examples. And I guess in hindsight, what it tells me is that there's a few things that I was using to try and stay sober, and none of them worked. I tried, I had profound fear against picking up a drink. It did not work. Um, I had the medical knowledge, um, didn't work. I also had uh, an instance, the first instance I used around the prescription medication. It didn't work because I'm the kind of guy who either drinks through it or stops taking the prescription medicine. So thank you very much for listening. If you would like to share your experience on a recovery question, visit the SoberQ podcast website at soberq.com. Thanks for listening.